Okay, here we go. We'll put the radar up there. We'll put gun rate to high, master arm on, hit those console lights, um, and then we'll go ahead and hit the floodlights as well. Select the Phoenix missiles. Excellent. There's a uh, bandit, 080, 68 miles, 30,000. 68 miles, okay. Let's go ahead and drop those fuel tanks. We won't be needing those. Roger. Thank you, Jester. All right, so at this point, we're just going to give them a Fox 3 at this range, uh, TWS mode, and uh, then we're going to enter the notch. All right, let's do it. Fox 3. Okay, now as we enter this notch here, it's very probable that he has done the exact same thing and has fired a long-range Phoenix missile at us. Um, that is the reason why we are entering the notch, to defend against it. Alright, so I'm just going to turn 90 degrees offset. And we're just going to hold this for a little bit. Now we did fire that missile in uh, TWS mode, which means that he will not receive a launch notification for it uh, right up until 15 seconds time of impact. At that point that missile will go pitbull, he will receive an RWR notification and he will defend it. Chances are it will be pretty low on energy too by that point. So for that reason we're going to turn back in, and try to recommit, pick him up on radar and uh, give him a second missile and continue to press him. Okay, I want to constantly keep him defensive. This is very much a chess game at this point because uh, both aircraft have the exact same capabilities. 
so it's really a matter of uh, who can screw with the other guy's tactics better um, so here we are I'm gonna see if I can pick him up on radar here there he is I see him slight bank to the right go ahead and give him Fox 3 again Fox 3 there it goes okay he's about 30 here we go 30 miles out and we're gonna re-enter the notch again okay. here we go so he's he's pointed at me as well he's nose hot which means he's probably also got another missile out okay we're back in the notch So this is the third missile we're going to come in. He's going to be inside of 20 here. When I pick him up on radar, it's going to be a TWS launch inside of 20 miles. That's going to be hella dangerous. Okay, he is probably going to die from this launch if I can pick him up and I have him. Here he is. Missile, 11 o'clock. Hot. Break right. Just outside of 20. Maybe right on the cusp there. We're going to go into the notch here again. I got Fox 3 off on him. Re-enter the notch and defend. He's got missiles off on me, one of them picked me up. Here we go. No big deal, keep it cool. Now he's locking us, nine o'clock. Yep, yep, I got it. Don't worry, Jester, I got it. Everything's fine. You gotta keep your cool. I know it's hard with a 135 pound high explosive missile coming at you at Mach 5, but you're no good to anyone if you're freaking out. So just keep your cool. Okay. Pretty sure I splashed them. Okay, here we go. We got the the red Tomcat. This is Sunday. I'm in the blue over here. We're at 73 uh, nautical mile separation, and uh, we're just gonna go ahead and push. We're both gonna drop our fuel tanks. Sunday's gonna climb for about 40,000 feet. He's gonna invert and he's gonna fire off a uh, AIM-54 here. And what he's just trying to do is add a little bit of extra distance to his missile by lofting it. Uh, you can see the missile's already helping him out. It's gonna climb on its own and uh, therefore once he's fired that Sunday's gonna come back down into denser air you don't want to stay too high when you're fighting Phoenix missiles you're making their life a lot easier when the opponent launches one at you um, so he's gonna come back down into denser air a little bit just so once he gets a missile notification he can defend easier his missile is already up and uh, I fired one as well now immediately after I fire the missile I enter the notch I'm doing this because I'm even though both of these missiles were fired in TWS mode 
which means I'm not going to receive an RWR notification for this launch and Sunday will not receive one for my launch. Um, right up until 15 seconds time to impact, that is when the Phoenix missile goes active or Pitbull and uh, in that scenario at, at that point you will receive an RWR notification for missile launch. So. Uh, both of us are making the assumption that the other has fired even though we haven't received an RWR notification So this is why I've already entered the notch defending against that first missile and uh, Also, it's a nice way to just disappear from his radar and screw up his situational awareness um, So here we go. This is it my missile Doesn't appear to be tracking him because if it was, it would be coming over here. Which is kind of strange because he's not in a notch. Like this is not a, a, a 90 degree on his way down. Um, his missile appears to be going for the space shuttle. So both of these launches are kind of useless. You can see that Phoenix missile just saw him. Which is ridiculous, by the way, because this is almost like the seeker head should not be able to see him all the way over here. Like that is an insane, that's almost 180 degrees for a missile to be able to see in a direction. <clears throat> so I'm not really too sure what's going on with this Phoenix missile. Maybe it's because it's so high. No, but it's looking to the side. I don't know, man. That's a very strange behavior from a Phoenix missile. But uh, whatever. There it is. It's coming for him. It's never going to have the energy required to hit him. Like you can see the true airspeed, 344, Mach 0.6. It's not going to hit him. Uh, so therefore, I've recommitted. I'm quickly just, you know, turning back in, picking him up, launching again, back into the notch. Okay, and every time I'm going back to the notch, I'm just assuming he's fired another one. Because when I come out of the notch, he should be able to pick me up on radar. Um, so therefore, you just assume that there's a launch. So I fired off another one. He has fired another one. And this missile's trashed. And you can see Sunday's doing the same thing. He's re-entered the notch here. And uh, you got a couple of chaps. That's Jester doing his thing. And uh, yeah, that that's basically a 90 degree. Yep, that missile right there just went stupid. All right, so he beat that missile. I recommitted again, fired off a third missile, and the range is what starts to to uh, get important as you get closer and closer. Inside of 20, okay, if you TWS lock a guy with a Phoenix missile at 20 nautical miles, the chances are pretty high you're going to hit him, because it's going to get there with a lot of energy and he's not going to have a lot of reaction time. All right, so anyway, here I am back in the notch here, trying to notch against that missile. Right there. I don't even think I was in a notch there, but that missile just went for chaff anyway. So we'll take it. Um, next, we have my missile. So this was my, my missile that was fired at about 20 nautical miles. And so that missile is the one that actually hits him. And it's about Mach 2.1. Hits him right in the face too. <laughs> but uh, here's the thing, TAC view registers him as dead. But watch what happens here. He still has power, so he manages to launch a bunch of AIM 54s in Pitbull, or sorry, in Mad Dog. And uh, Mad Dog just means that those missiles, they don't have uh, aircraft radar guidance, they're just on their own. And he's fired them like this. If I was somewhere over here, I would be in big trouble. Like they would probably see me. I get lucky that he fires them into the wrong side. If he fired them over here, that would have probably created some serious problems. Uh, but yeah, he fires off those four missiles with power, then he loses hydraulic power electrical power and everything and he ejects and there it is all right guys so that's the tag view uh, i hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching uh, i'll see you next time guys thanks